Has Mike Norvell talked to the media since National Signing Day? Since Signing Day? He has not. I know we talked with – we had Alex Atkins on, Florida State's new co-offensive coordinator – on Tuesday, and we were supposed to have Tokars, Florida State's new quarterbacks coach today, but that got postponed. So no, no, no Mike Norvell that I know of, if I remember correctly. So what were your impressions on uh, Atkins? Atkins, just kind of, this is how he is. I mean, he talks really highly of Mike Norvell, and he likes where the program's headed under him, and he definitely appreci appreciative of the opportunity. Um, you know, he's he's a guy that, even talked about he ranges not only in his position group, but I think he understands the offense very well. He's still got some learning to do, but he's a natural fit. I think I don't, he's not going to be the guy calling the play. That's not going to be what's going on, but for him to even understand and during games, make adjustments. And that also affects his offensive line group. I think it's, it only makes sense. And really to keep Atkins in Tallahassee, I think it was the right move from Mike Norvell to do the promotion, but he talks, he talks very smart and he kind of keeps it up straight up with you. He talked about AJ Duffy too, and him coming in and him wanting to learn the offense as soon as possible, even while he was in high school. And he's like, chill out a little bit. Wait till you get here. You're an early on Roly, So you're going to learn it sooner than some other guys. So um, just in person though, being around him as watching practices, having press conferences after practices, he's, he's definitely a down to earth guy. And, you know, he, he's hard on his, hard on his offensive line you know he, he's one of the few coaches on the coaching staff that you know a few times during the week if a practice isn't going well he's gonna right after practice he's gonna we're gonna do up downs after sprints and he's, he's gonna be hard on you and I mean we saw it even in the open spring practice which we got to go see a couple of those practices where you know after after that you know guys are doing up downs and that's you know, missed things. You know, there's some things I can't say what he's saying, but there's just some missed assignments, some things that you got to take care of off the field. You know, just he holds everybody accountable. It's not just one player. It's everybody. If you're, you know, screwing up, everybody's going to be held accountable. So Coach Atkins has a bright future. He's going to be, I think, a head coach somewhere someday. You know, we were already thinking about that whenever he was coming in from Charlotte. He's got that pedigree. He's got that coaching tenacity with him too and he's smart so um the same goes to kenny dillingham i think he's got a very bright future ahead of him and i think it was tough for him to leave mike norvell because those two were so close so um i think coach Atkins is just one of those other guys mark where mike just builds that tree of, of of a coaching staff that just goes off and does their thing and gets paid so coach coach Atkins is going to be the next one and that'll be a big one i think Got Logan Robinson here, Noel Game Day, talking of Florida State here with all of us. Uh, best discussion, debate, and analysis of college football right here at the Voice of College Football. We got 25 team channels, and of course, FSU, one of our first. So uh, bring it in here and uh, leave your comments and questions there in the live chat. Follow Logan at, uh, oh man, if I can remember your, your, your Twitter, Logan's Twitty, right? Yep, Logan's Twitty. Logan's yep. Twitty. Logan's Twitty. <laughs> I need to throw that on the banner and get it up there. Logan's Twitty. And of course, nullgameday.com. And of course, as with with all of these rumors and speculations with uh, the recruiting cycle still coming up through February with the transfer portal humming, with uh, Florida State just uh, bringing in the UCF linebacker, going after uh, Jared Verse at Auburn. Get into the Discord and see yeah. what the latest is. So you go to Patreon, search Noel Game Day, get into the Discord there. All right. Um, not to knock uh, Ken Dillingham's offense, but you know what would be a few things that you necessarily didn't like uh, and, and would like to see changed and, and see a different approach. Sorry, say that again. Sorry, I thought something popped open. And no, I was you're like, oh, good. God, here you're we good. go. No, just basically, are, are you good? You got to run? No, nope, no, nope, we're okay. good. Some Someone was tweeting eye emojis, so you always got to watch out for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch out. I was making sure some didn't pop because that's going to be the thing between this next two hours and where we're all eyes are peeled. Absolutely. To the tweet deck. But go ahead again. No, just basically with Dillingham's offense, yeah. just, you know, what was their – that you would like to see changed in a different approach? 
Well, I think with Kenny Dillingham, I think a lot of the play calling was uh, split in a lot of ways. I think people were believing that Mike Norvell was calling all the shots in every game. And I think primarily he was, but there was multiple times during Kenny Dillingham's tenure here at Florida State where he was calling the shots and, you know, Mike Norvell would make adjustments and he'd run his own thing. And I think it was significant to see that. There was plenty of times where the offense was struggling and you'd see Kenny Dillingham, you can't really see him, but up in the box <clears throat> calling down there to Mike Norvell and getting plays ran because you're not seeing Mike even talk. So I don't understand how Mike's calling the plays when Mike is not talking on the sideline. But um, I think Florida State is fine here. I don't think it affects recruiting much. Um, I think Mike Norvell is that offensive mass, that mastermind. He's one of the best in the country. I think he's very creative and making sure using a talent that he, that he has uh, on the roster and, Florida State, I think, is going to be all right. They're going to be fine, which I think it was a tough decision, like I said, for Kenny Dillingham to make because of those relationships he built. I mean, even before Kenny Dillingham left, Micah Pittman, those two connected well. And, you know, Kenny Dillingham talked really highly of Florida State and pushed for him to pick for FSU, which he ended up doing. And then Kenny Dillingham later on announced that he was going to Oregon. And Micah Pittman even recognized that and talked about it after he had committed saying, you know, Kenny Dillingham is a real one. And, you know, he was still talking very highly of Florida state while, you know, probably in talks with Oregon. So um, I think Florida state, I think, I think Kenny Dillingham, we'll see quarterbacks coach wise with two cars coming in. We'll see if that experience that, that smaller kind of experience there, if that plays a factor in Jordan Travis's development, as a quarterback, because there's still work to be done there. Of course, any quarterback can get better. Um, but I think this, I think the staff uh, at Florida state and where Mike Norvell is headed and definitely with coach Atkins now as a co-offensive coordinator, I think it just it, it bodes well um, because I mean, Mike is still your, your, your main guy calling the shots.